kid. I'm a bit hypocritical here because whenever I was team captain, I always choose the Malay boy first because <laughs> right? Ahmad can dribble, right? He said it. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the reality. That's the reality. He's a gold medalist. He, said it. He, he gets a little bit of latitude. <laughs> yes. Uh, Welcome to part two of Yahoo Footballing Weekly this week with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. And me, Yahoo editor Chia Han Kyung. And here's our SEA Games gold medalist. So Ray Young, hello, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Very special guest. Thanks for joining us again, my yeah. friend. How are hey. you doing? All oh, good. This is a local section, right? So this is a fitting. Oh, yeah. fitting He's wearing it. Attire. He's wearing it. It's all about Singapore this week. Sea Games <laughs> coming up in three weeks. Sea Games coming up. So we will be talking about that later in the show. As always, I start the show off every week by saying the same thing. Thank you. I got a whole chat this week on my yeah. Facebook page just oh, yeah. based on some of our discussion awesome, you know, awesome. and Instagram. And this week... Oh, the, we got the, a lo- pro- pro- possibly our longest ever This is possibly a comment, man. an essay. Go on, you kick this one yeah, off. Yeah, okay. So this is from CNA, Chop Chop News Agency. Great name. <laughs> Great name. So thank you for your um, comment. Uh, say, well, we yesterday, last week, we talked about Nathan Mao's debut yeah. in the Singapore Premier 15-year-old. Uh, who made the debut for Lion City Sailors. It was a record-breaking debut. Youngest, yeah, youngest ever, ever debutant. Deb- but just for the context, he only played with stoppage five minutes, time five minutes. Five he minutes. came on, I think, in the 89th yeah. minute. Yeah. But, we, but we said, I think you said that, you no, know, anything young, young, involving us is a good news. That was, Yeah, that's that was my... It. But this guy begs to differ on yeah. Neil's position on Nathan Mao. Um, he says that, um, well, I'm going to shorten it a bit. For me, it is really problematic for Singapore professional football to uh, in the long run because did you see the guys, did you guys see Nathan Nathan's play in the games? Really disappointing. Um, he didn't play much. He actually played very underwhelmingly. We can just see that Lion City Sailors just want to make a few, just want to make a new record for the sake of to have on their own name, but without the real deal. Let me explain why this problematic. Okay, when uh, Fundy first debuted, he was 16 years old mm. and he was really, really talented. Everybody can see it. Um, when Haris Harun debuted, he was also 16 years old and everybody can see how talented it, how talented it is. But this one, you no, know, it's hard to see where the talent is. So, you know, people might mistake that Singapore's youngster talent is not it's not at the and any anywhere near near the senior squad, so it's actually well to, to cut a long comment short. <laughs> Thank you for the long comment. Thank you, comment short. Yeah, you know, it's it's not inspirational nor good for Singapore football having to have Nathan Mao play so young. Okay, who sent that again? What was his name? CNA. Chop, chop News Agency. Chop, chop, chop News Agency. Well, first thing I'll, I'll say before the guys come in, thank you. I mean, this gives me hope. Even though you didn't disagree with me, that's fantastic. We all agree or disagree agreeably mm. on this podcast. But the fact you've, you know, such attention to detail, such passion, this is the kind of thing we want. This is fantastic. All I would say is I'm not as worked up about this as some of our other issues. You know, I, I genuinely can't get, you know, angry or frustrated about this. Talk to me about the Tampanese pitch in five minutes. <laughs> then you'll see me get annoyed, right? <laughs> Talk to me about when women's football do not have changing rooms to get changed in and I'll get annoyed. This doesn't, you know, perturb me that mm. much. But what I would say is this. The reason I do think that Nathan Mao's debut at 15 matters and is a positive thing. Look at the alternative. Let's just say he didn't make his debut. 15 year old kid, Chinese kid, goes home to his parents today and says, I want to be a professional footballer. No, there's no pathway. There's no hope. There's no example. There's nothing to aspire to. That's what happens if you don't have a Nathan Mao. Now you have a Nathan Mao, the same kid goes home and says- Secondary three student. Secondary three student Mm. goes home and says, I can do what Nathan did. I don't care if he becomes the next Fandi Ahmad. He is a 15-year-old Chinese Singaporean who made his debut for a top side in Singapore. The next decent Chinese Singaporean kid can go home to his parents and say, there is a pathway. At least let me try to see if I can follow that guy. For that reason alone, I can't see anything but a positive. You're in a professional sport. What do you think? Um, well, you're you're right. But I think if I'm reading this comment correctly, I think he feels that I, I, I intentionally didn't Google Nathan Ma. I just didn't want to know anything about uh, this player. I just mm. want to base off this comment alone. And I think there's merit to it because... Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean... 
I hope the Lion City Sailors actually think that he's good and they're fielding him for a long term plan. And it's not just a matter of, oh, no, this is a PR stunt. I agree. We're I just going to, like, we just, let's let a 15 year old play. We're going to create headlines, new record. And then, for, but at the end of the day, if it's for show only, then, then, there's, then there's no use, lah, mm. you know? Um, which, I mean, unfortunately, um, Image is a very important thing in marketing and sport. And sometimes in Singapore, especially, we tend to focus on the wrong things, mm. like the, the right narrative but yep. without actually the substance. So here's hoping that Nathan Mao is both uh, substance to go with the marketing. And I guess the only time will tell. See, that's really fascinating, Ray Yong, listening to you, because I see both perspectives. I see what I think is the athlete's perspective, which is records are important. They should be broken for legitimate reasons. I mean, you're a record breaker yourself. So I can appreciate why you wouldn't want gimmicks cheapening records. I completely get that from a sporting perspective. But from a Kiasu Singaporean perspective, <laughs> we're all about the gimmicks here, right? Oh, we're all yes. about the gimmicks. We're all about, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's the reality of the society we live in. Yeah, but it's a bit sad that we are putting so much seriousness on a 15-year-old. I'm not. Be, be <laughs> sailors or this this reader who wants him to be, be the next fundy. I think it's a bit... I, I get the point. I do get the point for both, you know, the reader and Ray Yong yeah. that it maybe somehow cheapens the, the, the record. Yeah. But I will say this. If the kid goes on to win Sea Games gold or represent Singapore, yeah, no yeah. one's really going to remember the 15-year-old. When no, if you uh, think yeah. about Fandi Ahmad, no, nobody don't. thinks about the fact he was only 16. Yeah. They think about he played in Groningen. They think about he scored in the UEFA Cup. They think about he was the first Singaporean to score in Europe. Nobody thinks about that particular record. I, I think it's a long way yeah. down the list of so, so, so accolades. We are actually, so now we are hoping that he, he actually turns out to be one of the bad, better Absolutely. players we, we find. Well, actually, you know, personally, what uh, I would say the coach that has had the biggest impact on my sporting career was Coach Stephen Quack, mm. Manchester mm. United fan. Apart from that, he's a fantastic guy. Apart from that. Uh, <laughs> apart from that. <laughs> nice. nice one, so nice one. Um, when, when I was 16, I actually met him for the first time because I was from uh, secondary four moving up to JC and then he was the JC coach. So, he, I mean, he basically said, hey man, look at yourself. You're not taking this sport seriously enough. When Fanny Yama was your age, he was scoring goals in the national stadium. It's like, oh, what, are, what are you doing at your age? Mm. And that really struck a chord with me. Mm. That made, really made me want to take right, my right, sport right. seriously okay. and like have the dreams that, you know, yeah, he's right. Fanny Yama was at my age scoring goals in the national stadium. And here I am like messing around, mm. playing football before going for track and field training, take, not, not sleeping properly, not eating properly, mm. treating everything like a joke. Like, so that's not the way you want to conduct your life if you want to be a professional athlete or mm. a high-performing athlete. So I think the, the story of Fani Ahmad actually has had far-reaching influences. Right. Fantastic. But, but yeah. you've kind of proven my point, haven't you? Because it's about the pathway. Your coach gave you a pathway. Look at this kid, what he did at 16. But, Look what you could possibly do. Correct. But fun, the reason why that was... Um, um, a credible story was because Fandi Ahmad went on to he achieved yeah achieve, I, I, yeah hence Fair justifying enough. this record so Fair ironically the best way for Nathan Mao to justify this record is to go on to achieve greater things and then one day people will look back and say yeah he was the talented 15 year old that went on to conquer the world yeah I that's agree cool. with that. Yeah. that that's what that's, we hope. That's, all, that's hopefully all the best we need. Absolutely. About. And if you agree, I mean, is Nathan Mao a PR gimmick or is he a pathway for other young footballers to follow? Always send your comments to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, Yahoo SEA on TikTok. We like to have both sides because we got both sides yeah. with this comment, right? Yep. What else do we have? So next one is uh, Bola Sepakon. This is one of our, actually one of our friends. He uh, runs a long time... Singapore football website, yeah, Kopo he's, Hui. he's great. So he said, um, SPL prided itself on being a nursery league, <laughs> having seen a number of teenage players make their debut against men. <laughs> and following that, this guy, uh, John Budgie, he used to play for, mm. did he play for Singapore? He did. Uh, I mean, uh, John Budgie, no, not I for Singapore, commentator. John Burridge, uh, he says, if uh, you're good John, enough, you're old enough. Now, yeah. John Burridge, and hello, John, if you're listening, John Burridge is an English football legend. Yeah. He played English football for Oldham. 30 years. Oh. He, he played for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Mm -hmm. He played for Southampton. He played for Aston Villa. Uh, I mean, just check his... Just check his Wikipedia page. I mean, the fact that he's listening to us, thanks, John, is uh, is a real bonus for the podcast. A 30-year playing career, made his debut, I think, at 17. Mm. 
why he's connected to us is he was goalkeeping coach for the uh, Lions yes, 12. Ah, co- yeah. He was goalkeeping coach for the Lions 12. I also think he and went also to... also sports commentator. Yeah, uh, correct, correct. Commentator, I think from right. the Middle East. And he also was a coach, I think, in the Indian uh, in Premier League, League yeah. for a while. Mm. So th- that's John Burridge. And John Burridge says, you know, if, if you're it, good enough, you're old enough. I would go a step further, and you'll probably disagree, <laughs> Rayong. I would even say in the Singapore Premier League context... If you're not quite good enough, you're still old enough. <laughs> meaning, <laughs> meaning, you can get better. Yeah. Uh, you know, throw them in there, see how they get on. Yes, if you're if you're good enough, you're old enough. That would apply to the more elite leagues. You know, you really have to be good at 16, 17. Wayne Rooney, good mm. to get into the first team at 16, 17 in the EPL. But in Singapore, if you're halfway good enough, <laughs> if you're 50%, 20% good enough. I don't have a big problem if it gets you in the experience. We are not blessed with that big a pool of talent yep. to begin yes, with. What certainly. do you think? I, I, this one, I 100% agree. Um, I mean, Singapore, we do have a sizable population. Is it five million nowadays? Five and a half? But not that, yes, but, yes, but yes. But not that many of that five million play football. In fact, I mean, at the risk of sounding like we're talking about like racial separation on this topic, but most of our Chinese players, the dominant race in Singapore, does not play football. Well, you're at the count. risk of sounding like me. <laughs> I, no, I say this, I say a, this every week. week. Really, they don't play yeah. seriously. We know, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the uh, one of my one of the players I follow in football is Gabriel Quack. Yeah, and I couldn't, good, I couldn't name another like uh, Chinese footballer that's who, the reality. who's yeah. like making waves yeah. in the local scene. And even Gabriel Quack has now come to the age where I think he's doing real estate like <laughs> on the side yeah. while... Yeah planning he for is, his like yeah. exit from football. But it was exci- always exciting watching Gabriel play, like ex- oh, yeah. exciting left-footed winger. But I mean, when the, I think um, there's no other country in the FIFA rankings where your dominant race is it's not, not represented at uh, international it's, it's, level, yeah, yeah. It's not really well represented on your international team. Mm-hmm. So that's something that's certainly concerning because then your talent pool is limited to a minority race. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that um, the that that cannot lead to success, but you're just severely limiting your talent pool. Well, and, let's ask you, as yeah. a Chinese Singaporean, what responses do you get when you tell people you're pursuing a professional sports path? Oh, people tell you not to do it because it's, it's not a pragmatic uh, career option mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. In fact, I, I used to play a lot of football when I was a kid. I'm a bit hypocritical here because whenever I was team captain, I always choose the Malay boy first because <laughs> right? Ahmad can dribble, right? He said it. He said it. <laughs> Hey, that's the reality. That's the reality. He's a gold medalist. He, said it. He, he gets a little bit of latitude. Yes. And then when it comes to the end, when you have a fat Chinese player, say you go keep it. Yes. <laughs> that's why I always. That's why I always becomes on me. <laughs> I'm more saying nothing. We're gonna get cancelled yeah. for this. Yeah, no, you said it. Nah, Carry on. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We, won't, we, won't. So we know how it so is. Hypocritical, yeah. but I, I mean, but that's the reality. Like when when I was a kid, like any other kid, I wanted to play football. And I was actually pretty good when I was in primary school, you know, like if inter-class soccer counts for anything, you know, um, I scored two goals in the semi-final. We drew 3-3. Three, three. I scored the penalty shootout yeah. and then we got knocked down on penalties. And then we didn't make the final of my primary school's like post-PSLE, like inter-class competition. Good and it thing. clearly hasn't bothered you. <laughs> <laughs> you still remember it 20 <laughs> years later. No, no, no. Yeah, but then, you know, when I went to uh, secondary school, I went to ch- the Chinese high school for mm-hmm. secondary one and two, and it wasn't a football team. Huh? Um, recently, they I think they started a football team. Yeah. But even if you had gone to Raffles at that point of time, there wouldn't have been a football team. There yeah. was not a football team no. in Raffles. But there's a rugby team, there's a cricket team. Well, we know team that. For, uh, we know that. They yeah. play the other sports. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we know sec- that. Secondary one to four, no nope. football team. And I think that the PE department makes this decision very actively because they know that if they have a football team, the entire talent pool will rush to football, leaving like none, like no. like like n- none other talent, no other talent for the other sports mm. or like or second pickings for the other sports yep. because football is just so popular, so popular in Singapore, so so popular. So if you want to do well in rugby and track, it's in your best interest to not have a football team because first of all, let's be very honest, the Atas schools will not be able to compete in football. I mean, it's just a so many more schools can put together a good football team but to do a good track team you need like so many different athletes like you throw sprints jumps distance whereas football i mean the neighborhood schools tend to like dominate football mm. and and like you know in singapore we say 
elite schools and neighborhood schools as a, I mean, uh, this is just the terms that we use to separate, like, you know, the privilege from the lesser privilege. I'm probably the least Rafflesian of the Raffles boys that you'll ever <laughs> yeah. meet in your lifetime. I would have fit in whether or not I'd gone to a neighborhood school or, uh, in fact, I didn't necessarily fit in all the time at a, at a, at a big branded school lifestyle wise but i mean anyway like you know if you look at the rankings it's always like you know like when i was a kid it was small school certainly victoria school but you no know, baduk south baduk view all had like pretty pretty good like football teams mm. yeah moving on towards the sea games let me ask you more generally about that what do you think about the sea games generally because when hun kyung and i talk about this we've been covering sea games on and off for more than 20 years i covered the first one of mine in 2001 when was your mm. first sea games 2009, right. person, yeah. But, so mm. I've been of the view, and you could completely shut me down on this one, um, that I believe that the SEA Games ideally would be seen as a developmental games towards the next level. Because in other parts of the world, those regional tournaments would be viewed in that way. Yes. Whereas here, they're kind of seen as an end in itself, the be or an end or. And I sometimes feel that that can make us limit our horizons, our ambitions. As a double gold medalist, what do you think? Well, I think it uh, depends on which sport you're talking about because there are sports that see the SEA Games as a developmental uh, competition, such as badminton. So I think uh, Jamin and Ken Yu, they're skipping the the this year's SEA Games yeah. to focus on qualifying for the Olympic Games. Right. But even though, and this is, even though both of them haven't won a SEA Games gold medal yet, yeah. they are still chasing that even that SEA Games gold. But the nature of badminton is such that you know, SEA Games is actually a very competitive <laughs> region for badminton. It's yep. lesser so for track and field, for example, or some of the other sports where the real competition lies on the global stage. But the reality is that if your sport is not at the level where you can even, like, medal at the SEA Games, there's really no point talking about anything beyond that um, because that's just, like, you know, talking for the sake of talking. But for, you know, but for football, if you really can't even like get out of the group stage at the SEA Games, there's really is no point talking about anything further than that. I mean, I I don't think I'm wrong in saying this. No, no. Yeah, yeah. And this you may not want to answer, but do you, some, how do you feel about the fact that, and, and Han Kyung and I, and I will be guilty of this, <laughs> football always tends to be the focus, at least primarily at the SEA Games. Yeah. It's football, football, football. I know it's a national sport, understandably so. Mm. Football, football, football. What's the target? Get out of the group. Gold medal, silver medal, whatever. And meanwhile, you've got these guys over here and they're winning golds and silvers and so But oh, here's football, 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 football. And they haven't won anything yeah. for the longest time. Well, I think uh, partly is that the media wants to report on stuff that sells, uh, sells newspapers, right? Mm. Or sells clicks nowadays. Yep. So hard copy doesn't really exist anymore. But Football is something that everyone has a connection to. Most people have a, have a connection to. Most boys have played football at some level, be it at HDB flats or interclass football. Most of uh, people in most of the guys in Singapore support a football team. Many of the ladies in Singapore have heard of football teams. So football is something that I think everyone has a natural affinity for. Um, it's most by far the most viewed and participated sport in the world. So I think that's why people keep looking at it. So it is a pity that our football team is always a constant like um, let down at, at international competitions. I think for a while when Alex was Alex Durek was playing or when Indra Sadan and Noah Alam Shah and ID were playing in 2004, 2007, we were winning the regional competitions. Mm. Never the SEA Games though. It's always, it was mm. always like the, the ASEAN Cup at best. So yeah, the SEA Games, unfortunately, um, the football still the team, holy grail. <laughs> yeah, still still the holy grail. Mm -hmm. A football team will usually start before the opening ceremony, and they're usually out before the opening ceremony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I but mean, what I like about this 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 year, I think, I think I think fans will be more forgiving of the young young yeah. lions if let's say you are given a realistic like ambition. I mean. All this talk about winning gold or and not they, they don't talk about this this season because they know they are in a tough group. Mm. First thing they are in a tough group. group. Second death. thing, no one's ever death. talking about gold for the football. Yeah, team. but they always take semi final, semi finals. When you know we actually yeah, yeah. still we are now uh, some ways from a semi final appearances, mm. given that other nations have improved so much. So this year is very quiet. Everybody said. Just, just finish. Don't finish last no, on bro, the table. Bro, it'll be quiet until they actually start playing. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be quiet in like two weeks time. And then, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, as a football player, I think I also think I'll be quiet. I mean, I'll put myself in their shoes, right? 
it's honestly it's quite demoralizing because yeah. like you're not in the strongest team and then and then and then you go there you get whacked you come back you get flamed by the it's, public it, it's it's not nice and like football team i mean part of it is self-inflicted because the boys uh football boys are also a bit playful you know mm. they in philippines they went to the casino after mm. getting whacked yeah. so that didn't but do that, them any that, favors okay let me ask you this being Stuff like that being blunt right i yeah. made a decision a long time ago when i was writing online i just made this subconscious decision i'm not going to whack the boys anymore because it got boring yeah. and <laughs> i felt like good. why should i whack the 11 kids on the pitch when the as opposed to the 5 million people who don't play the game mm -hmm. won't allow their children to play the game and yet the only time you hear them talk about local football it's is either the sea games or the regional games yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it's whack, 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 whack for three weeks before they go back to the EPL. <laughs> so what is your view on the criticism that the players get? Is it too far? Is it deserved? I mean, no one is immune to criticism. I get that. Yeah. But, you know, what, what's the middle line here? Well, I think, uh, okay, so two sides, right? The players there are the best we have. And that's they are, they are simply yeah. the product of a system that is very incompetent at producing a good football team. Mm. So... Yes, they represent us and they represent us. This is important because we have put up that team, mm. be it like the opportunities we created, the obstacles we created to football. I mean, when I was a kid, I wanted to play football. My dad, God bless his soul, he was a talented football player and a basketball player for Raffles back in the day. He said, no, you're going to do some other sport. Like there's no future in football. Mm. I mean, so like, I'm sure, I'm sure from the track and field point of view, like, I'm glad he did that because I wouldn't have been in track and field if I didn't play football. If, if I had played football rather, mm. or, or at least I would have to convert. But yeah, I mean, they represent us. So like, like we are saying they suck, but they represent us. Mm. So so yeah. we suck. So we suck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, I think these boys, they aren't, like I said, they are a bit playful. They are always getting in trouble for, you know, uh, going to the casino, or having poor diet. I mean, like a lot of them smoke. A lot of them don't eat well. So if you are going to be, eating roti prata on a, on a regular basis for supper and you're going to be smoking and you're not going to have a, you know, like you know, sleeping from like 10 p.m. to 7 p.m., get up early, go for your morning jog before going for training and eating a, eating a salad and like, you know, chicken breast and pasta and then going to bed, napping and then going out for another session. I think most of our boys maybe train once a day at, mm -hmm. at most. Then you're not really like structuring your life to set yourself up for success. And that's what you get. So we do. We lack that professional setup, really. Like we do. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm so glad you sat on the fence this week. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's fantastic. Well, speaking of fences. professionalism, <laughs> fences, wrapping it up. That's Let's finish with Tampanese. Something we can't, that infuriates him. We can't, we can't let this one go. Okay, very briefly, tell me if I get this wrong. Last week, Tampanese Rovers' fixture against Ballastir had to be moved at the last minute because the playing surface at the Our Tampanese Hub was considered unplayable because they just had a private event there, a, JS, a JSSL Football tournament. Academy tournament. The pitch was considered unplayable. Within 20, less than 24 hours before the game, it had to be moved. Couldn't be moved to Bishan, even though that's where Ballastir play. Had to Not go fair. to. Yeah, <laughs> which is true. Yeah, then it'd be a home fixture. So it had to go to Jalabasar mm -hmm. a day later. The coach of Gerlang, uh, Noali, our old friend Noali, said the pitch is just. Koya. Koya, <laughs> that's right. What do you think about it? <sighs> oh, it's just, you know. You want to say incompetent? I heard you say incompetent. Uh, uh, so, uh, administration. This is another example. It's 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 get so tiresome. You no, know, we we keep on trying trying our best to say you are you trying to see areas you're gonna run well, but and then you come up with this this thing saying that you know it's basic. Very literally the basics, ba basics. the most basic thing, yeah, the playing surface, the playing surface. Uh, Changing, you know, do, do you re-turf your surface? I heard it hasn't been re in six years. Yeah, um, 2017, yeah. And then just plain scheduling. You know that there are two professional football clubs using their pitch at, at our Tampines Club, Geylang and Tampines Rovers. And you lease it out for private And then private you lease event. it out for this thing. You, they, I heard there's a Frisbee tournament this week. And, I mean, the, and who, the private events need to be monitored. Yeah, Apparently yeah, they yeah. put goals up and yeah. things like that and, and then you're, change the yeah, lines. Yeah, they're putting and, all the board banners and bots you know, for, for, for everything and then... It's just overcrowded. Yeah. yeah. I mean, where, where is the... Where is, I mean, obviously you are... Our template site is not owned by FAS, it's owned by 
people association, yes. which means they want a lot of community events. Yes. But at what point does it say if you want to put so many events, then you return your 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 pitch more often, and now you make just just plain doesn't doesn't plain incompetency among or lack of communication among the the various associations, whatever it is, it just doesn't look good at all. Well, it's just where I will say that in Singapore, very often, especially in the realm of sports, we are a lot more style than substance. Like, mm. You know, we will have the nicest stadiums on the outside. Yeah. Case in point, the Sports Hub for so many years, like multi-million, was it billion? a billion? A billion? Yeah, billion dollar stadium. Looks fantastic on the outside. Mostly empty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then and then and then what and do you pitch. have? And then the pitch for many years, you know, yeah. we will host like all these like big games, get Lionel Messi to come and play, and then you complain about the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just so, yeah, embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, and then so it was it was like wh- why would we spend a billion dollars and like get the biggest events and stuff and then we cannot take care of the very basic stuff, which is the playing surface. Yeah. Mm. Because, same same with our templates. Huh? Yeah, but and, and that's to the point of and, and that's to the point of I think very often we are dragged in too many different directions, mm-hmm. right? Because high performance and community very Def- often correct. you need like very different approaches correct. to these two things. Absolutely correct. Absolutely. And here is where I'll talk about my friend. I think Joseph Schooling was put in too many different directions when he came back from America. Because when he was in America, it was very one track mind, focus, drive, train with the best in the world, bang, bang, bang. When he came back, I felt that Singapore, we failed him. We dragged him in too many different directions. We tried to, I, I was told that he's, he was having to go and do all these like community service. Like an MP things. almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doing like, the MP's job. Like, yeah, and, hello, and then after when he, when he doesn't perform, I mean, it doesn't look good on him, but it doesn't look good on any of us mm. because like he wasn't doing, he wasn't living the life of a full-time athlete. He was basically, they were trying to make him a politician. Yeah. They were trying to politicize his his achievement. So I, I do think that, I mean, you know, that that's um that's that's a similar situation here where the Tampanese hub is being pulled in too many different directions. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Couldn't agree more with both of you. To me, it's a, very briefly, it's a question of priorities. We can do it if we want to. Mm. We can build the jewel at Changi Airport almost overnight, right? We can turn yeah. a whole country into a so-called garden, right? We can do it if the political and economic will is there. It just isn't there. You know, having a decent playing surface at all of our stadiums, let alone one, is just not a priority for us. We can build condos in a year, but we can't put a decent pitch down yeah. for Tampanese. It comes down to where are our priorities. And to your point, we need to start making decisions about what these sports facilities are for. Yes. If absolutely. they are a commercial enterprise, then just put your hands up and say, this is a commercial enterprise. We're here to make as much money as we can. The pits will just have to suffer. Whether it's JSSL or Frisbee or anything else, it's here to make money. Or you decide it's a community enterprise. Therefore, it must serve the community. As a taxpayer-funded stadium, it must be there to serve the community team, which in this case happens to be Tampanese. And all your resources and effort and energy must be directed towards the community football club, Tampanese. Because as it is now, you can't have both. You can't. You can't. You can't can't have a community team, Tampanese, there sharing with all these other It's already sharing with Lung. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So just decide what our priorities are. Are we serious about sports or are we just serious about making as much money as we can from every facility we have? I think they know that. We know the answer to that. We know the answer to that. They're not going to they're they're spell it out right. I mean, but, like, you know, like you said, Jewel, fantastic example. Singapore can achieve stuff if we really like. like but I, I mean, of course, Jewel is another example of hardware. But in this case, I think it is the best airport in the world, yeah. arguably. I do think if we put the same focus into sport, we can have some of the best sporting facilities yep. and events in the world. If we had put the same focus into high performance for Joseph Schooling, I think, I think he would have, have, he may have well have had a chance of repeating. We can do it. We have Olympic some of the champion. best condos on places that used to be <coughs> football pitches. <laughs> but let us know what you think. Let us know what you think about the Tampanese pitch fiasco Whoa. and elsewhere and how we serve athletes like this young man, Joseph Schooling, and all of our young players and athletes. Send all your comments too. Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, Yahoo SEA on TikTok. That was a bumper episode today, but we had a bumper guest yep. in this young man. Thank uh, you thank very you much. Thank you so much for thank your you. frank opinions, man. Good luck in the SEA Games. Anything you want to plug? Where should they follow you? Instagram, where, anywhere? Ah, uh, it's okay. Uh, I, 
I've been told that I need to be humble. So I oh, humble oh, this stuff. <laughs> we don't need to be humble. He's a double gold medalist. Support him in the SEA Games. Good luck, my friend. Thank you. And see you all again next week. Thank you for watching and take care.